So you need to sum a list. Well, what are you gonna use? np.sum or the built-in sum function? Ah, in this video, we're gonna talk about the difference between np.sum and the sum built-in function. So I'm gonna import numpy as np, and I already have a matrix A that I created earlier, so here's that matrix A. And let's type in the built-in sum function that comes already in Python without importing anything. So we'll type sum of a and we get 1, 4, negative 2, and 4, which is adding down the column. So that's the sum of every single column. And if we do np.sum of a, we get one number back because it's the combination or the sum of every single element. Now with np.sum, you can give it different parameters. So let's try axis equals 0. Now you'll notice axis equals zero is the same thing as our built-in sum function, so it's adding down the columns. But what if we do np.sum of a with axis equals one? Ah, now we're getting the addition across the row, so you're adding every single row. But those aren't the only parameters. Here's a again. Let's do np.sum of a axis equals zero, and I'm gonna give it this parameter called keep dims equals true, which is telling it to keep the dimensions. So with axis equals zero, it was adding down the columns, and with axis equals one, it's adding across the row. So you'll see we have a row vector and a column vector that got spit out when we did keep dimensions. Here's a one more time. We'll do np.sum of a axis equals one, and I'm gonna give it a different keyword that says initial equal five. Now let me compare this to np.sum without the initial equals five, so you can see the difference. Basically, with initial equals five, it means you begin adding from that initial number. So the initial equals five is five more than without the initial parameter because you're just adding five to every single element in the sum. Okay, here's a again, and let's do a different parameter of np.sum. We'll do a comma d type equals float which of course just means you can change the type. You see that decimal spot there. You can also use this with a different axis, of course, to give it float types as a return type for each element. Now let's take a look at the documentation and you see we've covered all of these parameters here and that is the main difference between the built-in sum and np.sum. np.sum can do everything the sum can, plus it has all these other parameters that allows you to do so much more. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. For more videos on Python, check out this playlist. It's full of all kinds of Python tutorials like this one.